Hello, welcome to a Malkia Talks reaction video. Uh, today we are discussing the Moraine's Quest reveal. This, frankly, I I have to say is just their best reveal to date. It's the best teaser by far. Uh, we get so much story in this, so much intrigue and mystery, and I just have to talk about it. So here we go. I'm not going to spoil anything for the show, um, so to speak. We will be discussing it. I will be talking about a few theories. And uh, I will later in the video reveal who actually is the Dragon Reborn. So if you don't want to know, if you don't already know, if you haven't read the books, please watch out for that point. I'll put a little uh, timestamp in the video so you know what that is. And I will talk about it again before we discuss it so you have an opportunity to skip forward and avoid who that is. So I don't ruin it for you, but if you've read the books and you know, you can just watch and enjoy. So here we go. So uh, Moraine's request, like Moraine's quest is just amazing. Seriously, I was blown away by this. It was so exciting. This dropped on Friday last week and I I was in the middle of work and I was squealing in the kitchen and uh, yeah, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm excited to dive into this. First up, I want to discuss this shot of the three boys. Uh, I know a lot of people have discussed that Matt, Barney Harris is sitting there chewing his cuffs and I just love that. Um, this little character detail is amazing. I love this little sort of afternoon in Emmons Field scene we're getting here. Um, we get people in the background, you see activity on the go. So I'm thinking this is a Beltine afternoon, possibly, sorry, yeah, the day before Beltine, winter night when Tam is in dropping off the brandy perhaps and the boys are having a catch up and I can just imagine them discussing girls at this point being like oh I don't know like I really don't know what to do um, or possibly this is to do with Egwene's ceremony that is discussed that we see in the wine spring in scene that was dropped at New York Comic Con panel um, but yeah I just love the look on the three boys here and I want to draw attention to Rand's jumper like that's amazing uh, he's a he's a sheep farmer him and Tam they, they farm sheep and you know of course he would have woolen jumpers and it's amazing so I just got images we've discussed this in discord servers of images of, of Tam and Rand sitting there leaning away in the evening enjoying you know the crackling fire and some some dish cooking on the on the flames and such and yeah I just love it I enjoy that um, you know it's, it's a good touch it's a callback to his you know his place in the tourism and what they do and I think it's wonderful Moving on, it starts talking in the quest about what Moraine is up to. She's learnt this secret, the, you know, the, the dragon has been reborn, the last dragon as they're calling it in the little teaser, and um, it gets very, it's very focused on Moraine, she's doing her searching, and I just love the shots they've chosen as they dive through. Um, of her exploring and searching for things and I just it, it's absolutely brilliant the epic scenery is insane I mean this is what based off the uh, the tra teaser trailer we had previously I think this is Matt and Rand after Shadow Logarth and they're just walking through but look at that location that's incredible I mean that's that is an epic location imagine filming on this shot so not only do we get a lot of history and intrigue and mystery going on here but we're getting some epic scenery shots as well and it's just my mind is blown I'm loving it I'm loving it I'm loving it and yeah again this carries on now this doesn't necessarily need to be an on location shot but I'm like, frankly if you're filming in a place like we just seen in the previous picture why would you not who is on this horse is this meant to be Moraine is this someone else is this bad guys chasing them down um, let me know in the comments I personally I think this is meant to be Moraine but they've done that before and given us little twists and it, this could be you know this could be a monster chasing them on horseback is this a throwback to the Lord of the Rings um, sort of tribute that Robert Jordan paid in his first book is this like the Nazgul chasing them down is that sort of simulation is this a, a murderer on the prowl so to speak um, I'm not sure it's probably Moraine but let me know what you think in the comments and again I love you know we carry on and the searching you know we don't know to whom we don't know where while she's searching for the child that's been reborn and just the, the way she's hunting through the village and their response is brilliant it's just you know again this is Emmons Field is this the day out this got to be the day after she turned up so she's turned up in the evening um this has got to be she's got to be there like a day or two before I'm thinking see it's the only real thing I can come up with that she has turned up um a couple of days before winter's night because they turn up in the evening Lan opens the inn door um you know wanders in does his king of drama Lan Mandragoran this is Maureen um, which I just love, by the way. <laughs> but that's in the evening, very, very clearly. 
and if that evening also turned out to be winter night, then this wouldn't this scene would look very very different. Um, now this is not necessarily you know more rain in, in, in the previous shots um, in this shot, but you know could I don't know it, it's too close together. I think that you know looking at the the backgrounds and stuff and the daylight, it just looks like this is the same shot. So she turns up a couple days before winter's night. Uh, which would then previously fit in with three boys just hung around because that would fit in Tams dropping off and then going back, um, you know, and missing winter night. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I've talked myself out of that. <laughs> but I do enjoy that. And I want to highlight this man at the front here with a stick. Is this Senbui? I don't think it is. Um, but it's nice to know there are more people like Senbui floating around with sticks and grumpy looks and, uh, and such. Um, we see lots of braids. We see a cart in the background. Is this Pat and Thane? I'm, I think it is. This looks like Pat and Thane's car in the background. If it is, I'm really appreciating that little touch there that Pat and Thane's just casually in the background of the thing. Um, you know, something's going on there. It looks like the character, uh, sorry, the actor who's playing Pat and Thane, whose name eludes me at the right this moment, sitting there in the background selling something to someone. So, you know, this could be a post Pat and Thane has turned up moment. Um, are we getting the discussion with the village council? Who knows? But I just love this. I love that we get to see Emmons Field, you know, the Two Rivers Village in daytime, you know, in just normal day to day activity. This is life going on the Two Rivers. And, you know, I I hope that we get a lot more of that. Um, you know, it's then just, you know, two seconds in the show. I want to see, you know, maybe a good five or ten minutes floating around the village, inquiring about Moraine, Moraine asking questions, all that sort of stuff like this gives me hope for that sort of setup. We don't spend a lot of time in the two rivers in the story, but you know, I appreciate what we do get and I appreciate that it's in the show as well. The trailer then carries on and we start getting very dark and mysterious, but this one in particular caught my attention because this, especially when you play it in with um, the previous moments that you see, uh, sorry, the moments that you see around this uh, particular image, this reminds me of the uh, Loghain section uh, in the teaser trailer and again pieces you see in the little Loghain reveal they dropped on um, Twitter time last week prior to the, they dropped so many I don't know what day it was now the days all blur together <laughs> but um, this if you look at the background like I'm just getting very very similar vibes to that little underground cavern scene where they were having a fight is this a close-up of Moraine before she just I don't know, pins down Loghain with, with the power and tries to capture him before he does or doesn't escape. No, people are very torn on whether he gets away in that moment or not. Um, but yeah, the background's here, just particularly as you see on the left of the picture there, that looks like some pillars that were very similar to the previous shot uh, of, we, of the action we see on the air stepping with his axes and things like that. So yeah, I, I just wanted to call attention to that. I think it was really good. And then we get some symbolism. As more talking carries on, we have these two scenes here. So on the right-hand side here, I've merged these two pictures together, folks. Not, you know, overly detailed, uh, just to get the rough idea. So we have what looks to be, I don't know, dead sheep, I want to say. And it looks, from the top angle, it looks like land standing in there. Um, but they are in the, the symbol for the dragon's fang. And then... On the left, we have a whole bunch of people just walking on this, this, I don't know, stone pathway or something. And we see them through a canyon of some kind. And that canyon shapes out to be the teardrop. So, you know, we, we're getting the, the whole symbol there, um, which is just very subtly put in. These two clips follow each other. So we get the, the scene you see on the right hand side and then the scene on the left. And I just really enjoy that how subtly they slipped in that symbolism. We're getting a lot of circles further um, previously in the trailer reveal. Um, and so I'm glad that the, you know, the imagery is, is continuing to be added in there. Um, also, I love the gruesomeness here. <laughs> I've got to say, I wanted monsters. I wanted evil stuff on the go. I wanted, I wanted a little bit of carnage. I've got to be honest. And I'm so thrilled that we're getting, this sounds bad, gore. Mm. <laughs> I just, I want this to feel gritty. I want it to feel dangerous. I want it to feel, you know, like anything can happen. No one is safe. And fi wandering on scenes like this, I think is wonderful that you know they, they're showing detail like that whilst using it as a form of symbolism it's just brilliant touches on so many things i really really appreciate then we have some discussion of the dark one after we've 
ha you know, the, just going through with the trailer and Moraine doing the voiceover. Rosamund did a beautiful job of the voiceover, by the way. Um, it's edited very well together, obviously, but her just the, the tone of her voice was was incredible. We're talking about dreams here, and I appreciate that we have not just the three boys this time, but we have, this is Marcus. Then we have this looks like Matt in Shadow Logoff with the uh, the little windows we see in the background there, very Shadow Logoff vibes. Uh, we have Rand waking up somewhere, just look on the road again in his lambskin coat, which I really appreciate. But we also have a Gwen here waking up in the middle of the night. Now these are not necessarily all like the Dark One creeping into their dreams, but that is what the trailer suggests, and there's, that's heavily implied. Um, from from what you're watching and the tone and the the narration and obviously that you know it does happen in the book so I appreciate that, that is very easily and visually put in I think we've got looks like you know that's a very large person in front of Egwene there so I think that could be Marcus um, you know so this suggests to me this is a pre shadow logger for moment here whereas previously this just could be Rand sleeping on the road. This is definitely Matt in shadow logger and uh, I'm not really sure where this could be for Perrin but uh, you know. There's just not much going on in the background, sadly, for that one. But I do appreciate how we have them all experiencing these bad dreams. And it's just, again, nice little touches to the book. Very well put together in the trailer. And yeah, chef kiss moment, I have to say. Uh, I just <laughs> want to include this shot because we have, you know, you can see the horses in the background. We've got Mandab and Aldeeb. We have Land with his glorious top knot. We have Moraine and a glorious... Um, just outfit and gear and the the look of land sword in his uh you know his um his back i don't know what you call that sort of thing <laughs> the you know his sheath is on the back and it's just i don't know it was just a great shot i had to include it you know i'm a pre i'm a fan of nice shots um it, it works well then we start getting a little scarier in places. Um, we have this just scene of the fire, and while this is happening on screen, Moraine is talking about the fire will burn the world, and we get a little bit of magic happening here. Now, is this magic drawing the fire away? Is it causing the fire? Is this... This is clearly Winter's Night. This is clearly a battle scene, especially considering uh, a picture I've got coming up in, in shortly. Um, so this is clearly Winter's Night, which... You know, it looks, this looks like a disaster scene at the end sort of thing. But is this, I, this could be potentially mid-battle or Moraine's just like drawing in power. Is she going to start throwing fireballs around? That's my big question from this moment. Is she drawing in the power of the fire to throw fireballs? Are they going with the power in that sort of respect? Or is it just a case of just drawing power from everywhere because the power is everywhere? And, um, you know, it just so happens to be that way. But I enjoy the way it just sort of wisps into the white there. It's It's got a beautiful touch and I love it. Um, and again, as I said, I'm pretty certain this is Winter's Night. And I think we're getting a... I don't know. People look really upset in this picture. This is a way to Marin Alvere. Um, I just want to point out that Marin is, seems to be holding a knife of some kind. So kudos. I love that. Um, but the, just the the anguish and the pain on their faces right there. Like, is this because the inn is burning down? Is this because people are dying? Is it both? Did, heaven forbid, did Bran die? Um, I don't know. But yeah, they've they've been through some shit going on here. This is this is scary stuff. Um, the place, Emmonsfield is just burning down around them. Um, and just the pain, the delivery on that face, on both of them is just... Wow, um, I'm. This is going to be an emotional part of the show, and there's going to be lots of emotional parts of the show. Let's be honest, but you know, this is in the first episode, and I think, oh, I don't think we're going to be ready for it, folks. Um, you know, it's it's going to be tough. So, but I just I love that they slip that into the trailer. You know, just it really emphasizes the dangers that are going to be present in the TV show, and I am loving that. Um, then we move on about how the whole world is plunged into darkness, and this is very symbolic. We have one of the Emmonsfielders um, blowing out a candle, and then the whole scene goes dark. And, um, you know, it's just, it's very symbolic. Uh, they've chosen Yosha on this occasion to be the person there. Where is Yosha in this scene? I don't know. I think he's in an inn of some kind. Is this um, on journeys further along, and they are, you know, just going to bed after one night? I... <laughs> I don't know, this seems like a, not like a travel lamp situation that he's got on the go here. So I think this might be post where it's like him and Matt post Shadow Logoth and uh, you know, he's just going to bed. 
uh, at the end of, of a night and whatever has, has gone on for them. Hopefully nothing too dangerous. He looks like he's had a bath. It looks like he's, you know, reasonably clean and not too, like, terrified at this moment. It looked very cool and casual for him. So that's why I don't think this is, like, a journey scene between them um, because it looks like too much of a, a fixed lamp and uh, probably post because things have come down at that point in the book. So I assume the TV show will have a little bit of a, a lull in the action, so to speak, and things can... We can take a collective breath after all the chaos that has no doubt happened by that stage. Um, but yeah, it's it was very poetic with how the narration was going in the trailer. And yeah, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I'm loving everything, as you can tell, folks. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I love changes. I love, you know, the differences. I love being surprised. So I appreciate this. Um, just just the new things I'm going to experience. It's wonderful. Uh, this carries on with the whole darkness discussion where we get Shadow Logoth and we see this, I presume, is Mashida. We're not doing mists, we're doing an evil blackness, it appears, which I think is a great way to visualize that. Mist seems very, you know, oh, we've got a fog machine and you can't really control the fog, so you have to use it. You have to do, you know, computer generated um, graphics. And uh, if you're going to do that, you may as well you know, for fog, you may as well just do it for darkness. Like, there's not really much difference, I imagine. And this is, it's much more visual in terms of the darkness creeping over everything, like covering everything. It's like, I don't know, some form of opposite quicksand or it seeks you out as opposed to you falling in it and sucks you in. So, um, yeah, this is this is very cool. I, I'm curious how far it stretches. Because if it can cover, like, the whole city at once... You would just be dead straight away so it's clearly got boundaries and how far it can stretch and and, and come from so uh, i'm intrigued to learn that but i love this representation and um just i'm very excited for shadow logo as well anyway so i think one second no and uh yeah just this is it looks like randall Gawain uh, on the left there in the tower and um just looking over this broken abandoned city that is still majestic i mean look at that thing the domes the towers the open archways just the the intricate buildings that seem to stretch on for miles like this was once a huge grand city and it is now just ruins but even in ruins thousands of years later it is still imposing and has a sense of just power to it so i love that you know they've built this city for what 15 minutes in the tv show well i'm down for that that's 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 some good spending as far as i'm concerned this is your end result yes please um and this this has got to be a pre matt runs off and grabs the dagger moment as well because this is very calm very cool so clearly we're not getting the we rush into shadow logo we hide in a corner matt's like everything's okay let's go wander let's go exploring in this hidden dark city that no one knew about we shouldn't go into um sorry <laughs> but if you're going to build a city, let's have a look at it, you know, before you start running around and, and acting like idiots stealing treasure. So very much like that. OK, folks, so this is the spoiler time now. So if you have not read the. Well, if you've read the first book, you've, you've probably got a good idea of which character I'm going to tell you is the Dragon Reborn. Um, but, you know, it's confirmed in, like, the second book, really. Um, well, no, no, it's in the first book. It is, yeah, it's confirmed enough in the first book. So if you have not read the first book of The Wheel of Time, The Eye of the World, and you do not want to have it revealed, who is the Dragon Reborn? Because I think it's very obvious from this trailer that it's one of these four kids. Then you need to step away now. And then come back, maybe a little later. Check out the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm gonna talk about who it is. Okay, so you gotta you gotta go now. You got like three, two, one, go. All right, folks, let's get really spoilery. Um, I, I love I love that everyone is included. Okay, it's not just the three boys. I love that we throw in Egwene. Like that is brilliant to me because you got to keep it guessing. Egwene is a badass character. Um, they're all badass characters. I love them all. Um, and their their arcs are all really interesting and intertwined and i'm so glad that they've thrown Egwene into this mix because they've aged everybody up so she can be a very similar age to everybody and it's all appropriate so like 20 years ago they all look 20 in my book that all works so as the narration goes on in this scene like rand is taken out of it 
So by the time it's like, oh, and who is the dragon reborn? Like, the, you know, the dragon has been born again. You get just these three. You just get Marcus, Maddie, and Barney. You just get Matt, Perrin, and Egwene. There's no Rand. You know, it literally, like, Rand's there for, like, half a second on screen or something. He's just like, as more, as more rain is talking, you know. And then, but the dragon has been, you know, the, 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 the last dragon has been reborn. Um, it, it's the symbolism there, like, I don't know, if you're, if people are paying attention and they're like, oh, you know, like they're using misdirection, you know, it's clearly this guy because, you know, they, when they actually say the, the dragon, the last dragon has been reborn, it's only showing these people, you know, so it's just like, mm, which one is it? <laughs> I enjoy the misdirection. Um, I don't think they're going to change it up and make Egwene the actual dragon or, you know, Matt or Perrin. Like, I don't think that anyone is messing with the story that much. I think they're just giving us a mystery for the first season. I mean, come on, you need to do that. It was very obvious to me reading the books that Rand was the main protagonist and thus would be the dragon reborn. It was kind of like a no-brainer um, that was very confirmed at the end of the, of the first book. But I really, really love that they're keeping it a mystery from the TV show point of view. Um, I mean, that's the whole focus of using Rosamund and, and Moraine as the lead character so you can keep this mystery. I don't know how it will evolve later on and whether we get a Game of Thrones style and you get, you know, multiple different POVs and there's no, like, core lead character, so to speak. I mean, you will get Rand doing it as the Dragon Reborn. You know, if they choose to follow Moraine's path and kill her off, then you will get less of Moraine, obviously, from that respect. When Matt and Perrin go off and their individual arches and Egwene goes off on her individual journey, you will get moments where it's just them. Um, but, you know, it may still feel like Rand has the main POV. It's very possible. Uh, you know, he is the dragon reborn or the you know, the last dragon reborn. Yeah, I'm trying to fit in how they worded it there in the show, in the trailer, but it didn't work. But I just, anyway... I love this, and I had to bring up the difference between when, you know, he's on screen, but by the time they say anything about the last dragon has been born again, it's only the other three. And I really enjoy that. Also, is this Bella? This is Bella. Egwene rides Bella. This has got to be Bella. Folks, we have a Bella face. I'm sure we had this somewhere already, but now we have a Bella face in a trailer, and I like that, rather than just Bella butts because we saw the horses from behind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah very very cool i love that um and again we get more of this imagery it carries on it's very epic but in this case we have very clearly marcus on the left here that looks like Egwene, and then we have ran so anyone paying attention you know they've they've kind of you know they've thrown ran back in the mix but not in a very obvious way they're playing it very very subtly um but yeah, this is just, imagine this is a poster on your wall. I love this. This is a very epic, epic, epic shot, and I really enjoy it. So um, I had to include it in this bit because I'm just loving this whole thing. And then we're getting very, very dramatic. We have Marcus in the, in his forge, this looks like. And this has got to be winter night again. Um, so is he just hanging around the forge in the middle of the night and he hears some nasty noises on the go? Or is he like hiding and thinks, no, damn it, I've got to go out and fight. And he's just out to select the weapon, grab himself a hammer and start beating some Trollocs up. Maybe. Who knows? Um, the drama continues. We have a very bloody hand. It looks here. This looks like a monster's hand. So this could be a Trolloc hand. This could be someone wearing some kind of gauntleted glove or something, perhaps. Um, is this, there's a person in the background. looks like, is this potentially, you know, um, I don't know, Rand sneaking back into the farmhouse because thanks to the reveal at London Comic Con, I haven't seen the scenes, but I know that we do get the farmhouse scene. Yes, we get Narg. So is it potentially Rand sneaking back into the house, not realizing that Narg stood there? And Narg is like, Narg smart, Narg ready to fight. And then he, you know, are we getting the Narg scene? Like, is this Narg's hand? But I don't know, whatever it is, it's creepy. And I love it. And I'm down for it. And I want it. So, you know, the drama is really intense at this point in the trailer. And then. We end the trailer talking about the dragon and bosh, 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 bosh. We get a close up of all four of the kids. And, you know, we've got a lot of pain on Egwene's face, on Rand's face. I mean, Rand just looks decimated. Egwene is just, you know, the, the, the grief on that face is so impressive. We have um, Perrin there looking broody as F. Like, he is just, he is... Mm, yeah, he's going to kill someone. Um, you know, that that is like, don't mess with me, face. Um, I don't know, Barney just looks... 
Barney looks stunned, I have to say, as Matt there. Um, not really sure how to process it, which I think kind of fits well for Matt. I love that, you know, you got the, the broken hearts of um, Rand, you've got Gawain feeling just empathy for everything, feeling those feelings. You've got Marcus studying and reserved and, you know, just very, hmm, what do I do? And then, you know, Matt's just not really sure how to process it just yet. So, um, yeah, perfect ending. Keep the mystery alive. Which one of them is the dragon? And, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, I love it. This whole thing was amazing, I have to say. The amount of story, just, and the mystery put in was brilliant. This is by far, I enjoyed this more than the trailer. The trailer was amazing, and it was incredible to be a part of that, especially when the trailer got on with the dusty wheel. Thank you so much again, Matt Hatch, for inviting me on there. Uh, most people didn't get to see my reaction because I was hidden off camera while the trailer played, and I was there just losing my mind in the background. And then I had to, I had to put words together for you live. It was like twenty years, thirty years of my life had had, had come and gone, and uh, I'd been reading these books, and and I was like, I have to articulate how I feel at this moment. And this time, I've had some time to think about it. So um, I don't know. Maybe that plays into it. But I love. I showed this to a friend, um, actually my boss at work, <laughs> and I was like, we got another teaser. And he was just like, oh, so it's all about the dragon. The dragon's a person, right? And he was he was asking questions. He was hooked. He was interested in the mystery. And that's what I wanted. Like I showed him the first trailer and was like, my God, that looks amazing. That looks epic. My mother was the same way, but I showed him this and it was like the mystery, the, the, the intrigue sucked him in and he just, he wanted more. And he was excited. I could see it on his face. He was like, oh my God, November 9th. That's so close. That's so close. Like it's November next week. You know, It's like, where did that come from? So um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. That's kind of like my rambling thoughts about this. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it, folks. Uh, if you want to watch it and you haven't watched it, uh, Amazon Prime did stick it up on their socials, including YouTube, which I will put a link to below. Um, I haven't played it here because I want you to go and enjoy it in full experience. So I hope that you do that, folks, because it is brilliant. It was originally just released on their Prime account uh, a couple days before anybody noticed, and then we, we all saw it, everyone went nuts about it. And I don't know if they shared it out on their socials because we found it or because they planned to. Who knows? Uh, but we got it on the socials and we were getting all the stills and, and things like that. So it's it's been wonderful. I really appreciate the engagement from the show account. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, I just needed to talk about this. I'll do more of these, this is fun. Um, I'm enjoying talking about these. Um, my first time reader is gonna hop on for the next trailer review. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun, but folks, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you like the pieces uh, I brought up. If you have a, a favorite piece, put a, a, a little comment below on which was your favorite piece. Answer those questions I had at the beginning, like is that Pat and Thane, for example, at the carriage at the back, um, because I wanna know what you think about this. If you want to see more of this, folks, please like the video so other people can find it and subscribe to my channel because I do a lot of other things aside from reaction videos. I have like a, a weekly talk show and uh, sometimes I do some cooking and uh, narrations and other bits and pieces like that. You can find it all through. So have a look and enjoy. And uh, if you want to support me and help me produce more content because this is all done on my personal time, I do have to, you know, manage a household and uh, go to work and pay bills and all those usual bits and pieces. So if you want to help me do the uh, more more channel stuff uh, because I'm trying to improve things as much as I can all the time then please consider joining my patreon family uh, all benefits uh, are up for grabs there there's lots of fun things and uh, they're a great group of people that you can join and, and, and chat with in my discord server as well as uh, just you know, out in the fandom in general so hope you enjoyed this uh, Malkia reacts video and uh, until next time folks may you always find water and shade